What's up, I'm Vin, and today I wanna to show how to construct a perpendicular bisector of a line segment, and then I wanna explain why the process works. So if we start out with this line segment here, and we wanna construct the perpendicular bisector, what we wanna do is we wanna set the compass on the line segment, and we wanna extend it to more than halfway. And we can just follow these three steps. We're gonna swing an arc from A above, and we're gonna swing the arc below like this. Now, we're gonna move the compass over to point B, but it's very important that you don't change the length of the compass, otherwise it's gonna mess the construction up. So we're gonna swing the arc above, and we're gonna repeat this process. We're gonna swing the arc below like this. And now we have two points of intersection. So all we're gonna do now is connect these two points at the points of intersection like this, and we can extend the top one just a little bit so that it goes through. And now what, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna label this so we could call this point over here, we'll call this point C, and we'll call this point D. And then we could call this point of intersection on the segment point E, and we could throw arrows at the end of our line. And there's a few conclusions that we could draw. We could say here that segment AB is perpendicular to segment CD. So let's just say I take a part of this. I could say that these segments are perpendicular. And I could also say that segment AE is congruent to segment BE because a perpendicular bisector cuts a line segment in half and it cuts it at a 90 degree angle. So now let's talk about why does this technique work? Well, when we did the construction, we set the compass at A and we swung the arc above and below, and then we repeated this process from B, swinging it above and below. So because the compass didn't change length, all four of these segments are equal in measure. So that means AC is congruent to BC, which is congruent to AD, and that's congruent to BD. So this is all we could assume. But we could also say here that CD intersects AB at point E, and this is just so that the letters match up to what we have before. But now the goal is to prove that we have a perpendicular bisector, which we need to prove then that segment AB is perpendicular to segment CD, and then we need to prove that segment AE is congruent to segment BE. The first thing we'll say here is that segment CD is congruent to itself by the reflexive property, and that'll allow us to say that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BCD, by the side, side, side postulate. And from here, what we could say is that triangle ABC is isosceles. And we know this triangle is isosceles because it has two sides that are equal in measure. And from there, we could say that angle one is congruent to angle two because of the isosceles triangle theorem. The angles that are opposite of the congruent sides are also congruent. And now, remember, a moment ago, we established that triangle ACD was congruent to triangle BCD, and that'll allow us to say that angle three is congruent to angle four because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So now that we have two pairs of angles are the same and the sides between them are the same, this allows us to state here that triangle ACE is congruent to triangle BCE by the angle side angle postulate. Oh, and if you've never seen that symbol before, the three dots in triangle formation means therefore. So now moving on, now that we've established that this triangle here and this triangle here are the same, we could state that AE, segment AE is congruent to segment BE, and all in the same breath we'll say that angle AEC is congruent to angle BEC because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But notice we established one piece of what we were trying to prove, so now we just have to finish this out. So moving on to the last section here, what we could say now is that since angle AEC and BEC form a linear pair, and they're congruent, we said that here, those two pieces of information combined allows us to state that angle AEC and BEC are right angles. So these angles here are right angles. And now that we've established that these are right angles, we could conclude here that line segment AB is perpendicular to line segment CD. So thank you for sticking it out to the end, and I encourage you to try to use triangle proofs to explain why the other constructions work.